Oh hey there! Thanks for dropping by. Today I'm going to show you some of the finer points of drawing cables in Wirecat. Let's assume that we've already got a drawing that has devices in it that we've placed from our equipment library. And that we now need to cable these things together. In order to do so, I'm going to open the Draw Cables tool panel. I'm going to select my cable relationship and here we're going to start with a very simple one-to-one -one cable and I'll click either the top start cable button or the bottom start cable button. I'll select the output first and you'll notice as I hover over a connection point Wirecad will give you that CPO snap that lights up and then I'll select the destination here. Now, Wirecad's going to warn you if you mismatch signal type, but that is a setting in the project settings that you can silence. Okay, so I've placed a cable, and as we've seen earlier, the wires are sticky, so if I need to move something around, I can. If I need to change something about the cable, I can simply select the cable and click one of the grips. If I select the middle grip, then I'll get a dual vertex move. If I select a end grip, then I'm only going to move that end vertex. Now, I can turn on a function called tidy cables. And if tidy cables is turned on, then anytime I make a vertex or a grip move on a cable, Wirecad will attempt to keep that cable ortho or orthogonal. If you turn off tidy cables, you can always turn it back on or you can select a cable, right click, get the cable context menu and click the tidy cables function. Note that like any other drawn cable, if you move the block to which that cable is attached, you're going to invoke the auto router and Wirecad will reroute those cables however it sees fit. If for whatever reason you need to remove vertices from the polyline, simply select the cable and control click the vertex that you want to delete. Conversely, to add them back in, you hold the shift and the control buttons and click anywhere on the cable. A vertex will be added at that point. Now you'll notice that right now I'm fighting my tidy cables function. If you're going to do a lot of adding and removing of vertices, probably best to turn off tidy cables first. If you need to manually draw a cable, you're welcome to. Simply select the manually draw cable checkbox here and start the cable operation again. At this point, you will be responsible to place every vertex in that cable. Once you land on a destination point, simply right click to finish the command. Now I've got this really pretty custom cable that I drew. If I move this block, that will invoke the auto router and I'll get the default cable draw. The auto router will typically lay cable on top of cable as you see here. There is a setting, avoid other cables, that forces Wirecad to look at cables as obstacles as well. Sometimes we want to place an on-sheet reference, a pointer out of one port that points into another point someplace else on the drawing. Wirecad has provision for this. Simply select the Replace Cable with Pointers function here. Wirecad will prompt you to select a default pointer to set the source and the destination terminal offsets as well. Here's the default terminal drop-down. So I'll select pointer underscore D as my default pointer here. It also prompted me for my source and destination terminal offsets. That's the distance away from the port that I'll be drawing the pointer. And in this case it's 400 for the source side and 400 for the destination side. So I'm okay with that. Now I simply draw the cable. I click the start draw cable function. I select the source or the output followed by the destination or the input. Instead of a cable, pointers are placed and those pointers are automatically linked for me. Linked pointers, as we know from other tutorials, can be traversed, 
control double clicking the pointer will take me over to server 30's audio 1 port. Here we are. And control double clicking this pointer will take me back to server 39's AES port. If the drawing that we're pointing to isn't opened, it will be and then will be transferred into that open drawing. But for purposes of this discussion, we're creating on sheet pointers. And we can do that using the replace cable with pointers function. Sometimes we want to create compact inline flows and present the idea that our cable is being terminated in something, but we don't want to eat up a whole bunch of drawing real estate doing so. If that's the case, then drawing to or from a terminal may be appropriate for you. In this case, we'll place a terminal on the right hand side of the block and we'll cable to it. If we select this button, that assumes we'll be placing the terminal on the left hand side of the block. Looking through the terminals window here, I have a section for adapters, jacks, pointers, splice points, and terminals. All of these items referred to collectively as terminals. Wirecad terminals can contain one or two ports. I'll select this icon, click it, it'll be added to my drawing, and I'll be given the opportunity to place it. Now you'll see that the interface is showing me that this is ready to go on the right hand side of the block as we see here. Were I to place it on a port that's on the left hand side, it would draw into the middle of the block. So I'll select this here. That places the terminal and a cable in between that can be assigned. It's beyond the scope of this discussion to talk about terminal assignment. See the tutorial on that subject. There is one terminal that behaves a little bit differently and that's the adapters section. If you click on any adapter, you won't see a corresponding cable that is associated with that. Rather, we expect you to drop that directly on the port whereupon we'll retrieve the sysname information and the port info and transfer it into the adapter prompting you to select the connector to which we will adapt. All of that information is then added to the adapter. If you'd like to place a terminal on the other side of the block, it's a matter of selecting the other radio button here, terminal to a point in the drawing, selecting the terminal of interest, clicking on it, and then clicking into the drawing and dropping that on the port to which it's to connect. Pointers show up in the terminals windows as well. If we're going to use off-sheet pointers, then we'll need to first of all place the pointers and then link them. Let's say, for example, I'm going to point out of this server 2 over to another sheet. I'll place the pointers in the drawing first of all. Then starting from the source side pointer, I'll double click the source side pointer and select the destination drawing, in this case, test 1. I'll be switched to test 1, whereupon I can drag out a stripey string and land on the pointer to which I want to link. All of the data is retrieved from the ports and placed into the pointers. These pointers are now linked and can be traversed. Wirecad also has provision for drawing multi-relational cables. Here I'll select a one-to-many cable and I'll set the destination side count at three. Looking in my preview window here I can see I'm using the Y point approach so I get a Y point there. I'm going to add a little bit of horizontal extension just for eye candy. You can see in my preview window down here that we're going to create something like that. 
Our final selection that we need to make as we create this entity in the drawing is how many database records are represented here. Probably on a one-to-many cable like this, a single database entry will suffice, but that's up to you. Maybe you want to use the many side, at which point you'll have an entry in the cables database for each of the many sides of that cable structure. To draw the cable is like any other cable. You click the start cable function. You're prompted in the command line interface down here to select the source for the cable, followed by the destination. There are also multi-relational cables for many to one and many to many. One other function I'd like to show you is that we can oftentimes use the array command to create multiple cables. I'll go back to the one-to-one -one cable. I'll select start cable and I'll draw a cable from this output to this input. Now let's just say that I wanted to connect all of these ports together. Rather than drawing each individual cable, I can use the CAD array command. I'll select the entities that I want to include in the array. In this case, I want to make sure that I have the polyline that represents the cable and the two cable number text entities. Then I will click Drawing Rectangular Array. I'll select my row count and my row spacing. Now I know that my spacing between pin to pins on my block is one drawing unit. If I want the items to go down in the drawing, I'll use a spacing of my, minus one. But sometimes you may not be sure and you can pick that spacing using any reference point in the drawing like this. I'll click the pick button. The window will be dismissed and I can then say left click and left click to pick the distance. Here I'll create 16 rows of cable in one single column. The column count will be 1, the column spacing 0. Clicking OK then adds all of those items to the drawing. These cables here that terminate into nothing will cause you problems. Wirecad likes to have cables that connect to connection points. So I will select these three cables and click the delete key to clear them out of the drawing. All of these cables now can be assigned. One of the questions we get asked, however, is that they don't have the proper colors for their port type yet. Upon cable number assignment, that'll be remedied. Thanks again for taking a look at this tutorial. We hope that it proved beneficial. Feel free to download Wirecad and give it a spin. If you get stuck, give us a call or send us an email. We're happy to help.